So I must say that the flute accompaniment is quite beautiful. Thank you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, by your coming, you perfected the old covenant and inaugurated the new. In your love, you betrothed the church of all nations, and by your grace, you built her foundation on Peter and the twelve apostles. Now make us worthy on this feast of the consecration and renewal of the church to raise a hymn of praise and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the wise builder, who by his grace and in his divine providence and mercy built the church to be an invincible and secure fortress and a tower of salvation, so that those who have been saved by his cross may find refuge within her. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives now and forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O Christ, you established the spiritual Jerusalem as a holy, holy church and promise to be with her with, to be with her to the end of time confirming her in holiness strengthening her foundations on faith and laying her stones with love so that the gains of sheol shall not prevail against her Today we celebrate the consecration and renewal of the church. <clears throat> we cry out, out proclaiming. <clears throat> Rise up and shine forth, O church, for the Savior of the world has made you his dwelling. Rise up and shine, for the mighty Redeemer has saved you by his victorious cross. Rise up and shine, for the Holy Lord has chosen the saints from among your children. Now, O Lord, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to remember the church you have built and protect your flock from all evil. Grant rest to our departed in your kingdom and unite us with them in your heavenly glory, that we may glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Christ, you are the fragrant chrism, and we ask you to accept the fragrance of this incense as a pledge of our gratitude. May the bishops, priests, and deacons who serve at your altars guide the church in your spirit. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadishat, Aloho, Kadishat, Chayelantono, Kadishat, Lolo. At the altar, priest, now stand. All on earth be attentive as the Spirit hovers there. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Baruch mor dilan. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things 
that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the Holy of Holies, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of heifers' ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, then how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, in order to cleanse our consciences from dead works and to worship the living God. For this reason, he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, The Feast of Dedication was then taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him, and they said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Jews again picked up stones then to stone him, and Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? And the Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, who are a man, are making yourself God. And Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? 
And if it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I have said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I do perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came out to him, and they said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man is true. And many there began to believe in him. This is the truth, peace be with you. But Christ, being come a high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hand, that is, not of this creation. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. So the other day there was kind of an, a slightly amusing, though it's conducive for our contemplations of the church these two days, these two weeks. Uh, a while back, there was an individual from the parish, and we were talking over one of the many bills that we had. And the bill just happened to have come back less than what it could have been, you know, disastrously. And this good person said to me, boy, you really escaped that one. And what was funny about it is, well, it's not my bill, personally. It belongs to the community. But the question, the response that it, that it had solicited, wow, you got away, you know, easy this time, was in that appearance like I'm a shopkeeper or something, and you are customers, and you come and I have bills to pay. But that's not it. We are one community, and every bill that comes, I may juggle bills at any given moment at this point, there's about $12,000 sitting on the desk. Clearly, you can tell just by looking at the bulletin, we don't pay all of the bills on time. But they're your bills. And the idea is that we are one community brought together as one. And that's one of the things that we are meant to be contemplating them during these two weeks of the church. The church is an assembly. You know, in the Latin and the Romance languages, French and Portuguese and Spanish, Iglesia, that word itself is much more, it, that's from the Greek of meaning calling out. It means to assemble. Our word church actually comes from Greek also, but it comes from kyrios. It is by way through the Germanic languages, we talk about that assembly belonging to the Lord. And so Kiriakon became mutilated through German, through Kirche, Kirche, all the way to church. But they both have the same meaning, is that the body of Christ is assembled. And what we have today in the reading of this epistle and then you notice that it overlaps. It overlaps with a few of the lines from last week because it is the continuation of St. Paul's thought that on this Yom HaKippurim, that this Yom Kippur, that this day of atonement of the old law is fulfilled when the high priest comes as God incarnate 
and not with the blood of animals entering into the Holy of Holies once for this year and then having to have to do it next year again. He does this once. Because this blood is the divine blood that enters into God himself, into the true Holy of Holies. And he says, thus obtaining for us eternal redemption. You have to remember that the old law of Mount Sinai was bilateral. The people of Israel were brought out of slavery, brought to Mount Sinai, given a show, the theophany, 40 days of crashing thunder, lightning, fire, clouds covering the top of this mountain, with Moses disappeared into it. But at the end of all of that, it's a bilateral. If you agree to these words, what we call the Ten Commandments, but the Hebrews actually call them the Ten Words. They are the spoken foundation. You also call it the Ten Words. You just call it in Greek when we call it the Decalogue. Logos is word, Deca is ten, Decalogue just means the ten words. It's a Greek word referring to the Hebrew interpretation of the Ten Commandments. Anyway, the foundation, see how much you already knew, you just didn't know what it was, the ten words, the Decalogue. But the foundation of it, when you read Exodus and read this whole section of the Old Testament, and it's clear for the people of Israel, it's bilateral. If you follow these words and follow these directives, then I will be your God and you will be my people. It's a bilateral agreement. Which is why throughout the centuries when Israel was not faithful, was going after all of these false pagan gods and that, the prophets would arise and then slap them around and say you're nothing but adulterers because you made a commitment. But prior to that, 500 years before Moses was Abraham. And Abraham just receives promises. This will happen to you. Your children will be like the, like the stars of the sky. All the nations will be blessed in, blessed in your children. There's no, bi it's unilateral with Abraham. Just promises made to him. These are the things that I'm going to do through you and your descendants. So the important thing to understand is that this that St. Paul is writing about in the letter to the Hebrews is also unilateral. No one agreed to the death of God incarnate on Good Friday. This is something that he came, he did, and with his own blood enters into the Holy of Holies once and for all. That is why the fathers of the church see the new covenant as being the restoration of the promises unilaterally made to Abraham 2,000 years before. In other words, what takes place is our Lord enters, makes enter into time his kingdom, his plan, the divine plan, the divine economy. And then individuals either respond to that light or don't. But it is there, and it is healing, and it is salvation unilaterally. And it will be there until the end of time. The bilateral contract between Israel and God on Mount Sinai was just that, bilateral. And St. Paul says it was meant for a time. It was meant to prepare a people for a moment for a specific reason, to receive the Christ when he came. Now, of course, thousands of the Jews came to our Lord when he came. But as a recognizable nation, they refused him. So there is this stunting that what takes place with the old covenant of Mount Sinai. So what St. Paul is pointing out in this letter to the Hebrews, is the, or in our prayers that we have in the Missal, is our Lord is fulfilling the old covenant and inaugurating the new. But the new covenant is unilateral like God acted with Abraham. I know this is a lot to put it, you have 2,000 years of history, but basically Abraham is 2,000 years before our Lord, there's a 500 year period that's leading up to Moses, and then you have 15 centuries of the old law, the old testament, the old covenant. The fulfillment of coming of our Lord at the end of those 2,000 years is to restore unilaterally the original promises, because now he's come. Israel served the purpose of waiting for the coming of the Messiah. That was its purpose. So our Lord fulfills that covenant by coming. 
and arriving among us. As St. Paul says in the letter today, the high priest who has come of the better things to be established. Some of the manuscripts say of the better things to come either way. It means the renewal and the newness of the coming of the high priest. And so what our Lord is doing then is you have the ecclesia, you have the call. And the word goes out from our Lord through the apostles and the word goes out. He who hears you, hears me. That is ecclesia. Literally, the world means to be called out of. And so the assembly, the ecclesia, the calling together, are those who have heard the voice of God. And you'll notice again in the Husoyo today, as a tower of salvation, for those who are being healed, they move and they come to find refuge in that tower of salvation. So by the very fact of moving towards that place of refuge, which as it says, is the heavenly Jerusalem made the church. That the church is that place of that reality of the fulfillment of that unilateral promise made to Abraham. And in those who have heard, remember the gospel, our Lord says, I have sheep and my sheep know my voice. Standing in front of people physically, he says to them, you do not understand me because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear me, and they follow my voice. That's the imagery in the Gospel of St. John. It's the imagery of the letter to the Hebrews. It is the reason why we put up buildings that we call church. But the church is not the bricks. The church is you. The church is us. The church is a we. And whether you're in a basement or someone's garage, or for Ireland for centuries on rocks out in the fields, the mass rocks. That is the church. When our Lord says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the face of the earth? The fundamental answer is yes, but maybe not very many. When our Lord returns, you may have a hundred people who have finally been exiled by the rest of political governments to an island in the South Pacific. But those hundred people will still have priests in them, and they will all be baptized, and you will have someone who has some linkage to the office of Peter. Other than that, there may not be much. Standing around naked on the sands of this deserted island, not much, no cathedrals, no St. Peter's, they're all gone, they've all been bombed, all been torn down, or just left empty. Remember, we mentioned last week, no one's destroyed all the parishes in Maine. Catholics have destroyed the parishes in Maine. They've walked away. They've not kept those buildings because they are no longer assembled. The buildings exist only because there is a community that assembles on the day of the resurrection. If there's no longer a community or no longer an observance of the day of the resurrection, then there's no reason for a building. And so all that flows from that one question of saying, well, is it my bill personally? Well, of course not. It's a we. The church is a we. It's not an I. It's a we. The only I that exists within it is our Lord's, because it is the reality of his body. That's what St. Paul is meaning for us to contemplate on these weeks of the church, to understand that we are one living organism. And that's why we mentioned during this week, when one individual pursues virtue and tries to really conform to grace, he raises everybody up. But the individual within that body who chooses to sin drags everybody down. The same way if you have a bunion on your foot, it ruins the rest of your day. The only thing that's really sick on you is your foot. But it just screws up everything else, not only in the rest of your body because you're in pain and you limp, it just it makes you crotchety, you get nasty at work, your colleagues don't know what's wrong. Because of what? Because there's one thing in one part of your foot, and that's the same thing in the body of Christ. Within the one organism of the church, when everyone's healthy, the whole thing is raised up. When there are members who are sick, 
then it drags down the whole organism and the body. And that's why it means that even the hidden things, my saying of the rosary, my quiet little prayers at home, I'm benefiting hundreds of millions of people. But it also means those little sins that I think that are in the dark and no one knows, I'm also dragging those people down. And so there's a back and a forth because there's one organism, one living reality. And that's just what I wanted to leave you with today as we next week begin a whole new season of announcements, subore. Is last week I gave you the idea of how culturally over the last 150 years really we've moved from just living life to defining our lives by possessions, things that we have really from the end of the 19th century to now in the land of social media, la la land that we all live in, we define ourselves by appearances, my Facebook profile, you know, that I tailor to what I want. So the question becomes, after having just launched that idea out to you last week, the question is because, well, how do we start moving away from life as spectacle, life as show, life as appearance? How do we move away from that? Because God can't sanctify that. Our Lord didn't come in his blood to make sure you had the perfect Facebook profile. He came to make that you had the perfect heart, the luminous heart, the lebo shafio. So the question becomes then, well, all right, we live in this world that we live in. I have newspaper, I, you know, I live in the same world. I don't carry a phone around, so even if you had my cell phone number, it will still get the message which says, hello, you have reached Father Doran's phone which has been carelessly cast off on a table somewhere, so please leave a message and he will get back to you. It's kind of a hint also. But it does mean I use it. And as long as you use these tools as tools, you'll be fine and you'll be free. But if you live in them, and your face is always in them, and you're part of that seven hours a day average of Americans who have their faces in screens, you are shackled. You are not free. And to that degree, you are that much farther away from the voice of the shepherd who says, my sheep know me and I know mine. Because what I'm doing during those seven hours is listening to the voice of God knows who, and oftentimes truly God knows who, because I have no idea who's writing this blog or that blog or whatever. I mean, they tell you something, but how do you even know that that's it? Everything is appearance. So how do we move away from spectacle, living our lives as a show? The easiest, and the beginning of that for Catholics is to begin to live liturgically. What it means is to be aware of the movement of the seasons, of why we have these different events, why then during these two weeks we contemplate the fact that we are one living sacred organism, which is the church. That moment, next week we will have other things to complete. That is the easiest way to be configured to the reality of the word incarnate. And the very word, what I leave you with, we'll do vocabulary words over these weeks. You only have two today. And they're both related, so it's easy. In the letter to the Hebrews, when St. Paul talks about our Lord, he uses in the Greek a word for leiturgos. Now, sometimes it's translated as high priest and all that, but it literally, we don't use the word liturgists, but it is the one who does, liturgos in Greek comes from two words. Those you don't have to remember, just remember liturgos. Leitos, leitos in Greek means people, the public, the public. And of course, you already know the other word because you know the word energy, ergos, ergia. Energia means it has work within, you know, so your ever-ready batteries, they give you energy so you can run those little machines that you use all the time. It literally in Greek means that within, en, 
There is ergos, there is ergia, there is work within that little thing that you popped in there. And that's why when you push the button, it dances. Because the work comes out. So energy, the word. So ergos, leitos. So leiturgos literally means a public servant. This is someone who has come, who serves in the public interest. I don't have to say we had elections last week. So you know the whole idea about public offices. And so St. Paul uses a very clear Greek term that they will know as when our Lord comes, he comes as a public figure to bring everyone into this new humanity, this new people, this new letos. And so what does he do? He does leturgia, which is literally a public work. And this is another aspect of the church not being a group of individuals who just simply, you know, believe in Jesus and then we get together and dance and hug each other for a while every Sunday. Leiturgia is the very public work that is done by that one living organism. Leitos, ergia. It is the work that the leiturgos does of a public assembly and a public work. So to move ourselves away from a life as spectacle and show, and to pull ourselves into a life which is transfigured by grace, the very first step that we begin is being aware of the calendar, being aware of what moves by week by week. Because it's not just Columbus Day, as you know, there's no bank and so there's no mail, okay. The calendar, the calendar is the sacred time that moves and is transformed week after week. That is the notion of the seasons and all that. So you only have two words today. In fact, really one word, liturgia, liturgy. And to understand how we begin to enter into that, you will find the easiest way to draw within that voice of the shepherd and the life of grace. Because this is the meaning of what St. Paul, when he writes, he says, how much more then shall this blood of Christ than goats and heifers, animals, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Spirit offered himself, unspotted, unstained before God, how much more will that action, that liturgia, cleanse our minds, our consciences from dead works, just repeating things over, killing pigeons, killing goats, and over and over again to do these things, but don't do anything entirely to us, then how much more will he cleanse our minds and our consciences from dead works to be able to serve the living God? Become liturgical in mind, and you will arrive at the luminous heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for our ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten not to be consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in time to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sins he was crucified and upon his power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has sold it through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I tell what my deb head aloho, fall what I loho, dem hare kayo. I deb suro taibo to keo lal by tough west. Who ye had? How ye had? Ah, sorry. My apologies, we've all had a hard week. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Michael. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the repose of Emily Fournier. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We will continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Holy Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, love and faith that are pleasing to God. before you to receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly, it is right and just to glorify and exalt You, O Maker of all creation. With the angels, we glorify You, and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. Salvation. 
وبيوم حاضرتم خشوا دي اللي ما بدخي عن صاب لحم من قريشته وما رحب قادش واكسو يا بالتلميدة وقالوا مرة صابحوا لمهنة كل خوه خونوا داني تاو فاخروا ديل دخلوا فايكون واخلوا ساقية مي تقسيو مي تيهالا خوصون حومي وخوين العلم علمي So dumb, so men hamro who men mayo. Barahu Kodesh Yabil Talmida Kalo Mara Sabish Tower Mehne Kulufu Pono Denita Demohon Dila Diatiki Hadato. رحلو فايكون وحلو فساقية ميتي شادو ميتي هابا خوصون يوم حومي وحوين العلم علمين And he then commanded and instructed them saying each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the greatest of sins. Lord, we remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We Accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, 
Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop, assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to, make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world, enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Michael the Archangel, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who digit, diligently carried your gospel throughout the world, whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us, through, assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Deliver us from evil. 
kingdom, the power, and the glory are thine, now and forever. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our lives may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for our life. O Lord our God, to you the glory of
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O oh Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us. We may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your cross, be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings. That we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.